I was thinking of starting a separate video series devoted exclusively to covering the content of books and other little-known media which are actually great sources of inspiration for Dungeons & Dragons campaigns. I was thinking of calling it something like, STEAL FROM THIS! But then YouTube's algorithms might mistakenly identify me as advocating for a crime or dangerous behavior, so I didn't want to call it that exactly. So maybe we'll call it Inspiring Sources or something like that? I don't know, you'll see the title anyway. The point is, today we are talking about Dragon's Milk by Susan Fletcher. This book. This is a really excellent book to adapt into a Dungeons & Dragons campaign, especially a campaign for lower level characters. Here's the story. Kaeldra is a young peasant in a medieval hamlet whose sister falls ill to a rare and lethal disease. The only cure? Dragon's milk. Unfortunately for Kaeldra, she lives in a time when dragons are thought to have been hunted to extinction. Long ago, dragons filled the skies and terrorized kingdoms, but human beings learned ways of hunting them, and by the time of Kaeldra's birth, dragons had not been seen in nearly a generation. And yet, perhaps fortunately, Kaeldra hears rumors that there is a dragon which roosts at top of a cave in a mountain which overlooks Kaeldra's hamlet. So, with no other options, Kaeldra takes it upon herself to go up the mountain, see if there's a dragon there, and if so, try to get some of its milk to serve as the cure for her sister's illness. The journey is treacherous, she has to avoid the predations of wild animals, and at one point she fears that the wind itself will hurl her from the mountaintop, but she finally makes it to the apex. There, Inside the cave, Kaeldra discovers a trio of newly hatched baby dragons. They romp around her, they jump on her, they knock her over, and they lick her face like puppy dogs, and it isn't long before she's actually having some fun and playing with these baby dragons. Perhaps not the best idea, because it's not long before the mommy dragon comes home, and that mommy dragon is not happy to see Kaeldra playing with her draklings. Now, of course, Kaeldra is terrified. She begs and pleads with the dragon, talks about her sister, her sister's illness, why she needs some of the dragon's milk, and how she's willing to do anything in order to get some of it, and how sorry she is for touching and interfering with her baby dragons and coming to her lair and all of that. Now, normally, the dragon would just kill and eat Kaeldra on the spot, but since she has a brood of new baby dragons, she has need for a babysitter. She needs someone to watch her baby dragons while she goes out and hunts and gets food to bring back. Kaeldra readily agrees and says, of course, I'll watch your baby dragons, you go out and hunt, you come back, and when you come back, I'll get some of your milk and I'll go back to my village and we'll have this relationship and I'll come back here to watch your dragons again. And so that's how it begins. Kaeldra goes back to the village with meager amounts of dragon's milk every evening, and she goes back to the mountain to babysit some growing baby dragons every day. Eventually, happily, her sister is cured. But that's only when the exciting part of the story begins. For shortly after her sister is cured, Kaeldra goes back up to the mountains just to see the baby dragons and play with them. That evening, Mommy Dragon doesn't come home. Nor does Mommy Dragon come home the next night, or the night thereafter. And around this same time, Kaeldra hears rumors from her village that they're holding a celebration. Someone had discovered an adult dragon and killed it! Well, Kaeldra puts two and two together. She realizes that the baby dragon's mommy is dead, and that unless she does something, those baby dragons will be discovered and killed by her village too. The only option, she reasons, is to take the baby dragons on the road and sneak them across the valley to a place where they will be safe. What follows is an epic adventure in which a young woman pretends to be a hardy and brave adventurer, defending a trio of baby monsters from all kinds of dangers and eventually growing to be the very type of hardy, brave adventurer which she was only pretending to be at the outset. It's an amazing journey in which the heroes get to have baby dragons and watch them grow up, get to have a noble quest which doesn't rely on just killing something bad, and which is expansive enough to afford all kinds of side quests and narrative cul-de-sacs in which the adventurers stop and have some downtime. It really baffles me that this book is not better known. There's only like two or three videos on all of YouTube which even mention it. And while it is a book for children, it's not written like Faulkner or anything, it's very imaginative, has some wonderful themes, and inculcates a certain perspective in the reader, which engenders sensitivity and sympathy towards small things that need protection. It's a great book, and I would say, steal from it, especially if you want a dragon-themed campaign, which doesn't rest exclusively on killing a dragon, being afraid of a dragon, or treating a dragon as the enemy. Take Dragon's Milk by Susan Fletcher, and turn it into a D&D campaign that your players can go through. That's it for the first video of this steal from this, or inspiring sources, or whatever I'm going to call it, Dragon's Milk by Susan Fletcher.
Now, coming up this week, I'm going to have a very exciting announcement for future content on this channel, so I want you to stay tuned for that. In that interest, make sure that you've clicked like and subscribe and that you've also hit the bell icon to make sure that you get notice of all the new content that I put up here every week. Thanks for watching again.